Good evening and welcome to Ray Etzler Gymnasium here at Crestview High School. As you can see the lights are out and starting lineups are being announced in what is going to be a huge Northwest Conference matchup tonight between the Delphus Jefferson Lady Cats and the Crestview Lady Knights. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen and Dave. I, you know, this is one of those games and one of those atmospheres that doesn't come along very often. Everybody has heard and, and seen what Delphus Jefferson has been able to do over the last few years, and everybody knows what the Crestview Lady Knights have accomplished. These two teams being in the same conference have been a huge matchup year in and year out, especially over the last few years, and tonight is absolutely no different. You're right, Nate. It's great to be your wingman tonight, and hello, high school basketball fans. Two outstanding, tradition-rich programs. You talk about conference action. Crestview leads the NWC with 17 championships championships Jefferson in second place with 14 it's been a great rivalry as you said for the last several years tonight will be no exception gonna be another great night of lady night basketball and lady cat basketball so we are about to tip off we will take a, a look at tonight's starting lineup starting first for the Jeff cats they are going to start number five Hannah Wilty number 10 Gwen Teeman number 15 the thousand point score Olivia Lindemann number 30 Jessa Rostifer and number 42 Lauren French as the opening tip will be controlled by the Lady Knights. Their, their starting five will look like number three Macy Kowicki number four Ellie Klein number five Callie Gregory number 10 Lacey McCoy and number 21 Josie Kilwicky as we see a three-point shot right off the bat by Callie Gregory. And Dave, I was just about to say, as Callie Gregory goes, so does these Crestview Lady Knights, and you saw why right there. Yeah, she's the stat stuffer for the Lady Knights. You mentioned Liv Lindemann being a thousand point scorer. She just got that versus Ada this year. Callie Gregory for the Lady Knights, she pulled off the same feat just a few games ago against Bluffton. Both of them, leaders of their squads, both juniors. Cannot wait to watch that battle all night long. It, you know, we get quite a few thousand point scores, it seems like, as another three pointer on its way. That one is no good. But for those two women to get it here in just their junior years of high school just shows how prolific a scorers they are. Absolutely. Both reigning first team NWC honorees and Liv Lindemann, the reigning NWC player of the year. Lacey McCoy, a little bit off on her shot. Is we're going to have a Jeff Cat down on the floor. She's going to be injured. Teammates look like they're going to try to help her up. We'll see. They're going to come out and take a look at her. So we will step aside and we'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. As the injured Jeff Cat was Lauren French, she was able to walk off the court under her own power, so hopefully she will be okay. And she's a big part of this Delphus Jefferson offense. Almost a turnover, able to gather it back in is Liv Lindemann. Three-point shot is up. Wilty is good. Great three-point shot there by Hannah Wiltsey. She shoots 31% from three land. Struggled a little bit in her last game against Wayne Trace. Jeff Cat fans really excited to see her net that first one tonight. So here's Ellie Klein bringing the basketball up for the Lady Knights. Trying to look inside to Gregory. Callie gets it back. She tried to go baseline, has that one poked away. Hannah Wiltsey does a nice job defensively to get her hand on that basketball. So inbound, one more time comes to Gregory. She's calling for it back behind the arc. And that uh, right there is what Callie Gregory can do. Unfortunately, as you see, Ellie Klein not able to finish, but all the attention was on Callie that time. So both Jefferson defenders went with her. And Klein, I think the only reason she missed that shot, she was just surprised she was that open. Agree. Uh, the, the Lady Knights know how tenacious this Jefferson defense is. She was a little surprised to be that wide open, missed the shot. Nice drive by Wilty. That one goes off the side of the backboard. Ends up in the hands of the Knights. Gregory's going to drive all the way to the basket. Pulls up. That one short. Gets her own rebound. Put back is good. Callie Gregory now with all five Crestview points as they're on top 5-3 here in the early going. Yeah, good start for Callie Gregory, as you said. Gets two field goals here early. Lindemann pulls up from the free throw line. That one's going to go out of bounds. 
Wasn't touched by any of the Lady Knights, so Crestview will get another offensive possession here. Crestview in a zone defense here to begin the game. And Jefferson in their patented man-to-man. -man. And Lauren French is back in the game. That's great to see. So here's Lacey McCoy. Battled some injuries earlier in this season. Coming back from that, though. Yeah, McCoy actually tore her MCL, but she's cleared the play as long as she's able to, and she's been able to come back after sitting out a couple contests. And, you know, and that's good for this Lady Knights team. It just seems like they are not the same team when she is not on the floor as she gives them a big lift, especially defensively down low. Yeah, Josie McCoy with the penetration. Lauren French with the block. Here come the Jeff Cats. Lindemann gets it to Wilsey. As you see that rotating defense of the Lady Knights get over quickly. And they're going to force this one to go out of bounds. Last touch by Dolphus Jefferson. Great crowd here tonight at Ray Etzler Gymnasium. Just what you want to see. Jefferson in the driver's seat in the NWC at 4-0, tied with Lipstick. Lipstick's 5-0 and 15-1 and overall. That Lipstick has defeated Crestview already. Crestview needs to defeat Jefferson tonight to put themselves in position to possibly win the conference. Yeah, that loss to Lipsick came all the way back on December 1st, so a long time has passed. Crestview has had quite a few good wins since then, but still finds himself trailing. Shot goes up, this is off, tracked down by French. So obviously Crestview wants to win this one tonight, but it also keeps them in the running for that NWC title as Jefferson still has Lipsick to play. That'll be another big game as Lindemann's three-pointer hits. Liv Linderman, just a beautiful shot out there on the wing, and you can see why she's put a 1,000 in the book already. Great form, great finish. Liv Linderman shoots 35% from behind the three-point line, puts her team up one. Gregory kicks it out. Shot is up. That one is no good. Rebound comes down to Linderman. She's going to push the pace. One on two. She pulls up. Shot goes up. No good. French with the rebound. She goes up through some arms. Can't get it to go. Gets her own rebound, though. Teeman kicks it over. Three-pointer on its way. As Riley, Ryland, excuse me, Marquise couldn't connect on that shot, but Jefferson able to track down the rebound. Three offensive rebounds on this possession for Jefferson, all by Lauren French, the 6'3 junior post player. She leads the squad with 9.7 boards a game. She's cleaning up on this possession right here, Nate. Yeah, it's going to be important for Crestview to limit those second and third opportunities for Delphus Jefferson today. This possession not doing a very good job of it. Let's see if the defense can force a turnover. Shot goes up. This one is miss everything as Marquise could not connect. Another substitution as Kirsten Moore checks out of the game. And here comes that full. Oh, they're going to switch it and say that that ball was tipped by Crestview, I believe. So it's going to stay with Jefferson here. More substitutions as Macy Kowicki checks out of the game for Crestview. We also saw Jessa Rostifer come in for the Wildcats. Long pass into the backcourt. Some miscommunication on that inbound. It's going to lead to a turnover for the Jeff Cats. A lot of respect with these programs. A lot of respect with these coaching staffs. They, they like to get after it. It's just, I just love both programs. You just see focus, determination, purpose with both squads, and that's a direct reflection of how they're led by their coaches. So here's Kennedy Kreider. She checked into the game during the last stoppage. Gets it off to Gregory. Back into the hands of Klein. Crestview right now. Not trying to force the issue. Long three-pointer on its way by Gregory, and she makes it look easy. Crestview with eight points. Callie Gregory with eight points. Gregory eight, Jefferson six. Eight-six lead for the Lady Knights. 2-10 left to go here in the opening quarter. Hannah Wilty, long pass. Rostifer, head fake, tries to drive, has to kick it back out. Lindemann, she's going to drive into the lane, gets it up. That one's no good. French right there for the rebound, can't get the put back. McCoy comes up with the rebound and gets it up to Ellie Klein, who brings it up for the Lady Knights. Kreider's going to try the two-pointer. That one's no good. 
Rebound down to the Lady Knights, and a nice job by Callie Gregory to find Kowicki down low for the putback. And Jefferson's going to take a timeout, Nate. We're going to have a timeout on the floor. We'll step aside as well. Crestview on top of the Jeff Cats, 10 to 6. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. Welcome back to Ray Esler Gymnasium. Here in the, well, we're not in the early part so much of this quarter. We're coming towards the end of the first quarter, but Callie Gregory has been the story. She has either scored or assisted in all 10 points for Crestview tonight as they're on top, 10 to 6. Yeah, and I think Jefferson took that time out. I think Coach Lindemann's, <laughs> I was just going to say, she's going to say, we need to look to penetrate gaps in this zone a little bit more and move the ball. Liv Lindemann able to penetrate all the way to the basket. Liv Lindemann has great on-ball speed, as you saw right there, able just to go right through before the defense really knew what was going. Minute 10 left to go here in the first. McCoy looking for somewhere to go with the ball, gets it over to Klein. Kennedy Kreider, who has gotten a little bit more playing time than maybe some people would have uh, expected, especially with that injury to Lacey McCoy. She's given Crestview some good minutes and now able to come into this game and here in the first quarter and give them quality minutes as well. Yeah, she has taken advantage of the opportunity and Coach Gregory has a lot of belief and faith in Kennedy Kreider. Kilwicky's shot goes up off the front of the rim. French does a nice job of boxing out and gets that one. Lauren French has made her presence known on the boards at both ends. Lindemann pushes it up ahead. Open three-point try by Tiemann. No good, but French races down the floor. She might have been the last person um, down the floor, but found herself down low, able to get it. You can still say, oh, she's in some pain. She's toughing this one out. Agree. She, from that earlier injury, leg injury, but she's battling. Held ball tie up there, but again, another offensive rebound for Lauren French. I have her with five so far here in the first quarter on the offensive end alone. Lindemann kicks it out. Shots on its way. Marquise can't connect. Gregory pushes it up the head to Klein. Klein spins around, nowhere to go, so has to drop it off to McCoy. Nice head fake by McCoy. Goes baseline, goes off the side of the backboard, though. Going to have a fight for that rebound, and Lacey McCoy is going to get whistled for the foul. That is going to be her first, and that is the first foul of the night as well. Yeah, Lacey McCoy, she's a spark plug for this Lady Knight squad. She's going to make something happen. Sometimes you don't know what it's going to be, but she attacked the basket there, but then committed the foul on the rebound. Six seconds left to go. Liv Lindemann brings it up. She's going to drive. Drops it off to French. One second. French wide open. Fine down low for Gwen Tiemann. And Gwen Tiemann ties this one up at the end of the first quarter. 10-10 after the first quarter of this game's living up to the hype. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Our scoreboard presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. Second quarter just about underway here at Ray Etzler Gymnasium at Crestview High School. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen. You know, when we talked about it, we knew we were going to be in for a good one tonight. And, you know, I, I think that's exactly how this one shaped me up. Obviously tied at 10. You know, it was all Callie Gregory for Crestview. They're going to have to find a way, though, to get her help. She cannot win this one on her own tonight. No, and, and both Callie and Liv Lindemann are making their teammates better. They both have a couple of assists. We know Gregory has that one to Kawicki in that, that last play. Lindemann, you would think she would attack the basket. She went to French, and then French found Tiemann at the buzzer. They both make their teammates that much better. And we'll see how that plays out, Nate. Crestview's going to begin the second quarter with the basketball. McCoy, she's going to drive, pulls up, shots no good. French, one more rebound as Kennedy Kreider just reaches over to take that one away, and she will get whistled for the foul. Yeah, Lauren French gets knocked down again. She's been on the floor quite a bit, Crestview being physical with her, and uh, yeah, Kennedy Kreider picks up the personal. Yeah, French unfortunately is... Had a little bit of a rough night here so far as she's taking quite a bit of contact and end up on the floor quite a bit. 
Three-point shot up by Wiltsy, no good. Rebound down to the Lady Knights. Gregory gonna pull it back, guarded by Lindemann. Gregory drives, gets cut off. Lindemann doing a nice job defensively to keep Callie Gregory in front of her. It's awesome watching those two matched up against each other. Again, two of the better players in the Northwest District, Lindemann and Gregory, and they're showing it off so far tonight. And I think a play like what we saw just right there, and it's nice find by Kennedy French, sends that one back though. McCoy, she's gonna let the three-point shot go. That one rattles in. Kilwicky comes up with the rebound. Kilwicky has that one rejected, and it is gonna stay with the Lady Knights. But, I, you know, I think twice on that possession, I think this is what the, the Lady Knights are gonna have to do a little bit more of tonight. And it was actually Kilwicky on both of those, both those times, not looking to attack and take advantage of Jefferson, obviously paying a lot of attention to Callie Gregory. She had an open lane when she had it behind the three-point line, and there she caught it and wasn't even looking to go back up, was trying to find that, that pass back out. They've got to try to take advantage of what Jefferson's going to give them because all night long we know that they are going to focus that defense to one person. Yeah, great point. I'm sure that's the focus of the scouting report for Jefferson. Gregory steps back, another long three-pointer for Callie Gregory. From deep in the ray, Callie Gregory Dynamite from distance puts Crestview ahead by three. Now it's Jefferson's turn. Wiltsy, she's going to drive, loses the basketball, ends up in the hands of McCoy. She's going to push it. One on two, goes to the left side of the basket, and she's going to get fouled. And that's what McCoy will do. She'll just attack, sometimes with reckless abandon, but it's just unavoidable for the defense to keep from fouling her. Some stats from the first quarter real quick. Jefferson was four for 12 from the floor, 33%. Two for seven from two, two for five from three. They had 11 rebounds and three turnovers. Crestview, four for 14 overall, two for 10 from two, two for four from, from three, six rebounds. So. Coach Lindemann said, shared with us that rebounding was going to be key, and so far Jefferson is owning the boards. But despite that, Crestview finds themselves on top right now, 15 to 10, 608 left to go in the half. Liv Lindemann brings it up for the Jeff Cats. Going to go to the left hand, try to drive, gets all the way in as she went right into two Lady Knight defenders. Picks up that contact. She's going to make her own trip to the free throw line. And if you're a Crestview fan, you're hoping that foul's called on Josie Kowicki, which it is. That's Josie's first because Callie Gregory was involved in the play as well. But Lindemann, she's able to go either way, left hand, right hand. She went left there, draws the contact, going to the line where, again, she leads the Jefferson squad, a 76% free throw shooter. Lindemann second free throw on its way. That one is good. She now has seven on the night. Is it Delphus Jefferson is back within three. Here's Gregory. We've seen her pull up from that spot on the floor. Doesn't seem like distance is much of a problem for her tonight. She ends up dropping it off to McCoy. Working against Wiltsy. Long pass, Gregory. Three-point shot, that one rattles in and out. McCoy comes up with the rebound, gets it back out to Gregory. There Here's she is. Klein. Again. Klein's yep. gonna drive. Nice drop off, good block by French though. She's gonna push it up ahead. Tiemann drops it off, and that shot is good by Wiltsy. Beautiful basketball by Jefferson. The ball was never dribbled as it went from coast to coast. Nice passing, finishing at the rim. Good play, good transition basketball, Delphus Jefferson. You can tell that's just one of those things when you're so comfortable playing with each other and you're well coached. Gwen Teeman, as she jumps in front of that one for a steal, works against Kilwicky, gets it off the glass. That one's no good. As Kilwicky comes up with the rebound. Gregory kicks it down. Three shot on its way for Macy Kilwicky. No good. And we have another rebound by Rostifer. So Delphus Jefferson continuing to own the rebounding advantage is Hannah Wilty can't connect on that three-point try. Because right now, both teams are flying up and down the floor, playing a fast-paced game. Yeah, don't go out and get some popcorn. You'll miss something. It's really moving from end to end. Josie Kilwicky down low. French does a great job of not getting the foul on that one. Another block for her. That's number four in the block column. Shot on its way. That one's no good. And we're going to have a 
the foul. This one is going to go against Josie Kilwicky working against Lauren French. And Josie Kilwicky, she's going to be in for a long night, and she's going to match up quite a, a bit, uh, quite a bit against Lauren French. And right there, I, Kilwicky was just trying to box out, but because of the size advantage and because of how she had to position herself, got underneath French and picked up the foul. Yeah, there's a lot of comments coming from the crowd both ways on that call, but Lauren French has got to be able to come down, and Josie Kilwicky went underneath her. And again, as a big guy, I hated that when that happened, but it always seemed like the foul went against me anyway. <laughs> Instead of that situation. It's a miscommunication at the end of that offensive set for the Jeff Cats. I'm going to lead to a turnover, and Crestview now going to try to open their lead up. They've been up as much as five, and lead is down to one. Yeah, and if you notice Lauren French, she's really not guarding anyone. She's helping out everywhere on the floor. And that's why she has four blocks so far in this game. There's McCoy on the drive. She gets the shot up. It's going to be a foul. I believe they're going to get Wilty. That is who they call. It is her first, team second. Lauren French, as we said, four blocks thus far. She leads Jefferson with 21 coming into this game. Make it 25 now and counting. First shot by McCoy is good. McCoy is 61% free throw shooter. Puts the Knights back up two. McCoy's second shot on its way. This one is good as well. She remains perfect from the line tonight. Coach Gregory's going to take a timeout. He often does that after a made shot, does it here after the made free throw. So just a 30-second timeout, so we will keep it here. And You know, Dave, we talked about the ramifications when it comes to conference play. Um, you know, Crestview with just the one conference loss to the undefeated Lipsick team. Delphus Jefferson sitting up there undefeated as well. You know, this game, you, you know, you play it out and it has a lot going on, but Crestview needs this one. They'd actually then need Jefferson to kind of help them out and knock off Lipsick to keep that tie. So there's there's that part of it as well. And then just that that rivalry. These teams, you know, just that we want to we want to win this game. We want to be better. You know, obviously the banners hanging in the gym here. Jefferson just starting to kind of you know, uh, kind of have that same kind of success, trying to take that next step as well. They want to win and show that they can play with the quality team like Crestview as well. So so many different dynamics in this game tonight. Absolutely. And you can go back in history a little bit. Coach Dave Hoffman leading the Jefferson squad for years. Coach Greg Rickard, the Lady Knights for years. Denise Lindemann and Mark Gregory have picked off right where those two coaches left off with this rivalry in these two squads. Coming out of the timeout, Lindemann throws up a three-point shot. That one's no good. Rebound comes down to the Jeff Cats. Wilty drops it off to French. As Lindemann comes over to take that one away from her. As you saw, some pretty tight defense from the Lady Knights on that possession. It's going to end up in a foul, though, for Macy Kowicki. That's going to be her first. It's the team's fifth of the half. With 3.15 left to go here in the second. Yeah, Macy Kowicki showed a little emotion there. She typically is pretty stone-faced uh, during the course of a ball game. So here's Ross to first. Gets the inbound. Almost had that one taken away. As Klein is all over Wiltsy, but Wiltsy takes it right back. Drives, pulls up, shot on its way. That one's no good. Gregory able to chase down the rebound. So a little bit of a slower pace here as Gregory slows things down, brings it up across midcourt. McCoy waiting for everybody to get set, ends up getting it over to Klein. Klein's going to drive, gets cut off, has to kick it back out to McCoy. McCoy's going to drive now. She gets all the way to the basket. That one's up and in. And she has that ability. She's probably the quickest player on the floor with both squads. Just has excellent muscle twitch, able to get to the basket right there and finish at the rim. And Lindemann comes right down. Good answer by Olivia Lindemann. Absolutely. Yeah. Again, she's right-handed, but, man, she goes to her left so well. Actually favors going left a little bit more so than right. You don't typically see that lethal getting to the, getting to the backboard and finishing right there is Liv Lindemann. Three-point Lady Knight lead there on top, 19-16, 2 left to go here in the first half. Ellie Klein's going to take the out-of-bounds. A little bit more of a slower pace from the Lady Knights here in the last couple of offensive possessions. 
They're trying to let things get set. That one is almost taken away as Nevaeh Ross was trying to hand it off to Gregory. And you saw Kirsten Moore jump in there. Yeah, great defense again. Great defensive game plan. Break up that handoff because they do. Crestview likes to get the ball back to Gregory on the wing and then let her go to work. Jefferson had something to say about that, but did draw a foul in the process. So they actually ended up calling that one on Jessa Ross to first, so that is her second. McCoy working against Teeman. Throws it across the court. And when it's all said and done, ends up back into the hands of the playmaker, Gregory. She's going to pull up into the lane. Bounced off a couple times, no good. Lindemann comes up with the rebound. She's going to run. Nice job by Kilwicky to cut her off. Now French going to work into the lane, gets it back to a cutting Lindemann, and we're going to have a travel. So they were trying to set up the give and go that time, but good defense by the Lady Knights to get the basketball back. Yeah, great defense there. Again, Callie Gregory guarding French, but stepped off a little bit when the handoff was going to occur, causing the travel, Crestview basketball. Kirsten Moore now has drawn the task of having to mirror Gregory and go everywhere she goes, not letting her even come up the floor by herself at this point. Klein up top, guarded by Lindemann. She's going to drive, has some space, decides to drop it back over to McCoy, who gets it right back down to Gregory. Gregory works into the lane. She thought McCoy was going to run baseline. McCoy stops, ball goes out of bounds, going to go back to the Jeff Cats. Yeah, Crestview worked so hard to get the ball into Gregory there on the right block. I think Coach Gregory, uh, Callie's dad, a little upset that she gave that up, would have liked to have seen her attack the rim. The problem, though, is when she gets it down there, Lauren French is looking to leave her man and help double on Gregory. So tough situation down there on the block for the Lady Knights with that outstanding Jefferson defense. Moore, she's going to let the three-pointer go. That one's no good. Rebound comes down to Jefferson. Fight for the loose ball. And we're going to have another tie-up. Possession arrow. Looks like it's going to favor Delphus Jefferson, so they'll be able to keep this possession with 37.2 seconds left to go in the half. And the tie-up after the tie-up. It's a rivalry. Even when the whistle blows, I don't want to give it up to you. <laughs> Klein and uh, the Jefferson basketball player right there battling hard. Lindemann trips underneath, still gets it, though. Does a great job of creating some space so she can get that shot up. Even though it couldn't go down, she is going to go to the free throw line. Excellent spin move without the basketball, taking the defender, Macy Kowicki, into the middle of the paint and then coming back, and her teammate looking for her right there, draws the foul. Lindemann going to the line to shoot two. Macy Kowicki picks up her second foul of the half. It is the 16th foul for the Lady Knights. Lindemann makes her first free throw, second one on its way. That one's good as well. 35 seconds. We'll see if Crestview looks to hold it or tries to hold it. It's going to be tough to do either way in this game to hold the ball this long, but see if the Knights can hold it for the last shot. Ellie Klein gets it over to Ross. They is waiting for Gregory to come free. Jefferson does a nice job defensively to make sure that doesn't happen. So Ellie Klein takes it back up top. And they eventually do get into the hands of Callie Gregory. She's guarded by Lindemann. Ten seconds left to go. We're going to have a steal. Wiltsy does a nice job jumping in front of that one. She's going to work against Ross. And she's going to get called for the carry as she tried to come back around into the lane. A turnover by the Lady Cats with two seconds left to go here in the half. Turnover both ways here in the last 35 seconds. Crestfield just want to get it in. 2-1, and that shot is no good. So after first half of play, it continues to stay tight as the Lady Knights head to the locker room with a one-point lead. They're on top, 19-18. We'll step aside and be back with the second half on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. Welcome back to Ray Edsler Gymnasium. I'm Nate Garlock alongside Dave Bowen. Second half action just about underway. And so far, Dave, this game has lived up to everything it's been built to be. It really has, Nate. It's been an outstanding first half. Two evenly matched teams, and the stats bear that out. 
Delphus, four for 11 from two, two for 10 from three, eight for 21 overall for 38%. They are four for four, perfect from the line. They have 15 rebounds. They have seven turnovers. Crestview from two, three for 17, 17%, three for seven from three though, for 42% overall, six for 24 at 25%. They are also perfect from the free throw line, shooting four free throws as well. Rebounds, they have 12 again. Uh, Jefferson has 15. And then turnovers, Crestview with only three. Coach Gregory's got to be real happy with just those three turnovers with how active Jefferson is on defense. Conversely, Jefferson, Coach Lindemann said, we got to finish some of these plays off a little bit better, guys. You're doing a lot of work. I really think both halftimes in the locker room, there were a lot of positives being shared by both head coaches. Yeah, and I think, you know, I think the one negative they're probably going to take away, a little bit of sloppy play. We did see some some giveaways and some possessions that didn't quite go how they should have. And, and both of the star players for both of these teams, Olivia Lindemann for the Lady Cats and Callie Gregory playing even tonight, both 11 points um, in the game. We saw Callie Gregory get out to a great start as eight of her 11 came in the first quarter. Jefferson had a nice job of slowing her down in that second, but that's when Lacey McCoy went to work, got, got into the lane, was able to get to the free throw line a few times. And Olivia Lindemann has, help, has had help tonight from Hannah Wilty. She's got a three-pointer, five on the night. So uh, uh, the supporting cast also giving these girls some help as well. But as we move forward here into this third and the fourth quarter, you know, I, I expect both these teams to try to get more people involved, to try to move that ball around a little bit and try to see if they can't open that defense for Lindemann and Callie to be able to do a little bit more. You're right. The supporting cast, it's huge here. Again, a lot of leadership from both Lindemann and Gregory. But who's going to step up? Who's going to make some of those gritty plays for either squad to give themselves an opportunity to come away with a W? Here we go. Third quarter underway, Crestview begins with the basketball. Gregory up around midcourt, guarded tightly by Wiltsey. Klein looking to go inside, has this one poked away. Quick hands by Olivia Lindemann. Yeah, you got to keep that ball down in triple threat position. You don't want to put it above your head. McCoy guarded by French, puts up a three-point shot. That one's no good. Have a tie-up already. Possession arrow favors the Lady Cats. See what Jefferson does coming down now. You know, Crestby a little stagnant there, didn't have much movement. See what Jefferson does on their first offensive possession. So here's Olivia Lindemann. Double team comes, she drops it off. Nice job moving around the perimeter. Hannah Wilty now gets it over to Teeman. Teeman down low. Lindemann, triple team, gets through it, gets a shot up. I think she thought she might get a little bit of contact that time as that shot was a little high. Again, saw the same thing Tuesday night at the beginning of the third quarter. Lindemann played inside a little bit more against Wayne Trace. Did that on the first possession here. Kowicki's follow-up doesn't go down as after Gregory put up a long three-point shot. Team and she gets cut off. Has to give her to Wiltsy. Wiltsy found it wide open as she ran baseline to the basket for two. Excellent penetration for Hannah Wiltsy. The blow by gets to the rim, kisses it off the window for two, and gives Jefferson the one point lead. This is the first time that the Lady Cats have had the lead tonight as they are on top 20 to 19 here in the early part of the third quarter. McCoy gets it back to Klein. Klein can't handle it though. As Rostifer got onto the floor to get that one, we're going to have another tie up. Possession arrow this time will go to the Lady Knights. Yeah, any time the ball has been loose at all, both squads have gone after it. As far as 50-50 balls, it's been 50-50. Long pass in to uh, Kilwicky, excuse me, up top. And there's Macy Kilwicky, gets it over to Gregory. She tries to drive. And every time she tries to drive, it seems like two or three red jerseys are running at her. That time, no exception. Callie. Puts up another three-pointer. This one's good. As all of her damage tonight has come from the three-point line, as that is her fourth three-pointer of the night. And that's where it's going to have to happen because, again, the defensive game plan for Jefferson. Lauren French just really looking to offer a lot of help. That driving lane just isn't there. Lindemann, a little bit of a hesitation on the dribble. She has that one rejected by Gregory. Gregory on the run out has numbers. Drops it off to McCoy. McCoy, she gets it around the defender. Can't go. And we're going to have a fight for the loose ball. Last touch by the Lady Cats. 
Transition basketball off the steal. Crestview pushes it up quickly, unable to come up with a bucket, but they do maintain possession. We mentioned last time down about the three-pointers by Gregory, and it's not just that she's making three-pointers, it's from how deep she is making them. It is hard to guard somebody when they are out that far because you know what happens when you kind of get out there on that island. It makes it a lot easier to get around. And it's almost bad defense to go and play that tight that far, and she's more than comfortable to play out there. Absolutely, and defensively, you're thinking don't go out there, but you don't realize you do have help behind you. Great shot that time by Ryland Marquise as she, Marquise as she gets hers to go down. Big bucket. Marquis comes off the bench and gives the Jeff Cats a real nice spark. Does a nice job there. Shot from the corner for Klein. That last basket was the first of the night for Marquis. We mentioned that both of these teams are going to need other players to step up for some scoring. Wiltsy's three-pointer no good, but we already saw Wiltsy make a basket and then Marquis with that one. Good defensive rebound. Ellie Klein, one of the smallest players on the floor, able to deflect it to a teammate. Basketball out of bounds. Last touch by the Lady Knights. So another empty possession for Crestview. And we are going to have a timeout as Coach Gregory's going to want to talk about it. We will step aside. We will be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. Coach Gregory takes the early time out here as he wanted to get his team together and regroup a little. Yeah, you know, the first four minutes of the third quarter, it's huge as to how the second half's going to play out. And Crestview's had some uncharacteristic turnovers here at the beginning of the third with three thus far. I think Coach Gregory just wants to settle his team down, talk about offensive execution. So Liv Lindemann bringing it up for the Lady Cats. Mark Wiss gets it over to French. Here comes the double screen for Lindemann off the back side. Macy Kowicki does a nice job fighting through that to stay with Lindemann. And then you saw Ellie Klein get her hand on that basketball as it goes out of bounds. You talk about Ellie Klein getting the hand on the basketball. That's what both of these teams defensively so strong. Just get deflections and it just gets you frustrated offensively. But again, the mental toughness that both these teams bring, they're just going to keep attacking. But that defense has been solid both ways. Pass down low to French. She kicks it back out. Marquis three-point try up and good. Another three-pointer for Ryland Marquis. Yeah, Lauren French hasn't scored a whole lot, but boy, has she made her mark on this game. Great inside-out inside action to Marquise, who scores there. Largest lead of the game for the Lady Cats. They are on top four, 26-22, with 3.49 left to go here in the third. Foul. This one is going to go against Hannah Wiltsey. It's her second team's first of the half. Big possession for Crestview. You don't want to get down too far in this type of game. There's a turnover, though. Lindemann did a great job right at the whole way. Got in front of it, just couldn't get it in. And sometimes those wide open ones are the hardest. And I think Lindemann heard a little bit of steps, rushed that one. Yeah, and I think her footwork got off a little bit. I mean, she's solid doing that. It just got her footwork off a little bit, wasn't able to finish. Nice drop down low to Josie Kilwicky. She's going to get fouled. So Crestview is able to escape that turnover, that light ball turnover, an uncontested opportunity to score, and then they turn around and draw a foul right away. Big free throws for Josie Kilwicky. She is a 52% free throw shooter for the Lady Knights. First free throw on its way. This one is good. That foul was on Gwen team, and it was her first, team second. As Kilwicky lines up her second free throw. It is up, and it is good. 26-24, Delphus Jefferson on top. Crestview in man-to-man -man defense, where we saw them play quite a bit of zone in the first half. Team in just a little bit short on that three-point try. Goes out of bounds. And Lacey McCoy is going to check back into the game for the Lady Knights. Hey, 
McCoy comes in for Kawicki, and we see Kennedy Kreider in there again as well. We talked about her in the first half a little bit, how she has contributed to this, contributed to this Crestview squad. She's a task with guarding Lauren French down at the other end. McCoy looking for somewhere to go with the basketball. Ends up getting it over to Klein. Here's Gregory. Working against Teeman, gonna go down with the right hand, looking for the screen. Changes directions, four Jeff Cats came over there, and just a heads up play by Callie, Gre Callie Gregory that time, as she saw pretty much the entire defense collapsing on her and found one of her open teammates for two. Yeah, Kennedy Kreiner with the bucket, give the dime to Gregory. Great assist, as you said, Nate. All tied up at 26 as we continue to go back and forth. Seemed like just a few moments ago, the Lady Cats had all the momentum as they were starting to open it up behind a couple of big three-pointers by Ryland Marquis. And just like that, though, the defense from the Lady Knights clamps down a couple of turnovers, some made baskets, and we are tied again. Olivia Lindemann now goes back up around top, being guarded by Josie Kilwicky. Gonna let the offense get set. Looking for the double screen, still couldn't get through. Kilwicky did a nice job of staying with Lindemann. And we're going to have a timeout. This time it's going to be Delphus Jefferson. They're going to take the full timeout. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Delphus Jefferson calls the timeout as they didn't want to lose that possession as the Lady Knights were playing good defense and looked like the Jeff Cats were just a little bit out of sorts. Yeah, just solid man-to-man -man occurring both ways defensively. Let's see what Jefferson does coming out of the timeout with the set play. Minute 45 left to go. Liv Lindemann has been held scoreless so far here in the quarter. Jefferson liked to get her a good look at the basket. Marquis shot is off. Lindemann flies in there, can't gather it in. Rebound ends up in the hands of Kreider. McCoy then pushes it up ahead to Gregory, working against Lindemann. She's going to drive, gets cut off. Nice find. Klein gets shot up and good for two. Yeah, Ellie Klein, she's just like the stone-faced dagger out there. Gets the pass again. Give Gregory the assist. Klein with the bucket. Ellie Klein has her first two points of the night. As Crestview goes back on top, 28-6. Teeman, she lets a three-pointer go. That one's no good. Lindemann, though, able to get the rebound. Both these teams have done a nice job tonight on the offensive rebounds, giving themselves second and third opportunities. As Lindemann gets tripped up, ends up back in the hands of Teeman. Jefferson's going to reset here with 50 seconds left to go. Wiltsy down into the corner. Marquis three, no good. French there for the rebound, no. Put back is up and good. And we're going to have an and one as Kennedy Kreider was trying to mark out Lauren French that time. I think, again, you're just seeing a little bit of that size disadvantage as Lauren French able to establish herself down low, and now she's going to make a trip to the free throw line. Yeah, Kennedy Kreider gave great effort, but again, the 6'3", Lauren French, she's been beat around tonight. She's had a lot of offensive boards. There's another one with the hoop and the harm opportunity. Lauren French, I'm a Chevy guy, but she's built Ford tough, Nate. And there's Lindemann with the offensive board off the missed free throw and the stick back, hooping the harm. Foul is on number 15 for Crestview. That's Kennedy Kreider. So she picks up two quick ones, and Macy Kowicki is going to come in the game for her. We talked about how good both teams had been on the offensive rebounds. Delphus Jefferson that time taking full advantage of that. It's Liv Lindemann finally in the scorebook for the third quarter. And she now steps to the line looking for the and one. We said she's a thousand point scorer. Do you know her mother was a thousand point scorer for Jefferson as well? And, and older sister. Everybody in the family. They, Except all... dad. <laughs> but he's on the bench. Varsity assistant coach, Bob Lindemann. But yes. A very successful basketball team, rich in tradition. And you saw that time Liv Lindemann able to knock down the free throw to put her team up three. 31, 28, 18 seconds left to go. Gregory with the basketball right around midcourt. 
Klein comes up, but the offense gets set. You gotta imagine they're trying to run something to try to see if get, they can't get Gregory open. There she there is. She is. Three-point shot on its way. That one's no good. Rebound down to French. One second left to go, and that is gonna bring the third quarter to a close. So after three, Delphus Jefferson has the lead there on top, 31-28. We'll step aside and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpaw, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Fourth quarter just about underway here at Ray Edster Gymnasium. And this should be an entertaining fourth quarter as neither team has had a lead larger than five. Delphus Jefferson just had their largest scoring quarter of the game at 13 as these two teams continue to go back and forth. Yeah, Jefferson outscores Crestview 13 to nine there in the third quarter. They shot 38% from the floor, five for 13, got 13 shots off. Crestview only nine shots, 33%. Crestview had three turnovers, Jefferson zero in the quarter. Jefferson starts with the basketball here in the fourth. Three-point try by Wiltsey is no good. Going to end up out of bounds. Last touched. They're going to say last touch by the Lady Knights, actually. So it'll stay. I thought the official was pointing direction that the basketball was going to go, but I think he was pointing at who it went off of. Yeah, Liv Lindemann with excellent hustle. All out to go get that basketball. Was able to knock it back in and off of a Lady Knight leg. Jefferson lob maintains possession. His lob down low to French. She's going to go to work down in the paint. Can't get that one to go. McCoy with the rebound. McCoy, as she's been doing all year long, a presence down low. May not be the tallest or the biggest down there, but she makes her presence felt. Charlie Klein not able to connect. But Josie Kilwicky was there to try to get the put back. She ends up fouled. And I believe they are... They, they must have called that one on the floor, so it'll be out of bounds, Crestview's ball. You mentioned McCoy getting that rebound. We really didn't hear her name called in the third quarter. We'll see what she does here. She's got to play a factor in this game for Crestview. Liv Lindemann was called for that foul. It's her second of the game. Klein changes directions, nowhere to go, has to get rid of it. She came back up to take it away from McCoy now. Working against Marquis. Wiki with the shot from the free throw line, and that one's good. Big play by the senior role player, and Crestview gets a turnover, and then they turn it right back over. That time, sometimes that's what can happen after those big momentum swinging turnovers. And just got going a little bit too fast that time. Josie Kilwicky trying to find Ellie Klein, ends up out of bounds. And Macy Kilwicky with a big shot on the front end of that turnover. Is now it's back to a one-point game, and she has her first two of the night. Yeah, Kawicki doesn't score much, averaging three points per game, but it always seems that when she hits one, it's a big bucket for the Lady Knights, and that was the case right there. Brings them back within one. Here's Liv Lindemann dropping it down to French, who gets it over to Wiltsey. Wiltsey down in the corner, brings it up around the wing, goes baseline. And we're going to have a foul. This one's going to go on Ellie Klein. Seems to me a little bit, you know, the Jefferson girls, a little broad shoulder, a little more broad shoulder, a little stronger, you know, physically, a little taller at each position. Seems to be showing itself a little bit here right now. We'll see how the rest of the quarter plays out. Here's Teeman working against Kilwicky. Ball goes off of her foot. Wiltsy able to gather it in. Nice job by Wiltsy that time to save that possession as it looked like it was destined to go into the backcourt. On the ground, fight for the loose ball, and we're going to have a timeout. Jefferson quickly gets that timeout in as Rostifer was in danger of losing that possession. Great timeout by Coach Lindemann, as you said, almost had the turnover there, and the timeout keeps the ball with Jefferson here with the one-point game with 620. So check out WOSN's website, WOSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WOSN.TV. 31-30, Delphus Jefferson on top. 6.20 left to go here in the game, and a huge NWC matchup as 
this one could go a long way to helping decide who takes home that crown this this year. Yeah, we'll talk about some concerns that we discussed with Coach Gregory. He said we got to take care of the basketball. They've done that very well. They only have six turnovers. Limit the offensive rebounds for Jefferson. That would be an area that, as you've said during the course of the game, Nate, both teams have had a lot of offensive boards. Lady Knights have been patient on offense. They've wanted to take three charges. Jefferson really hasn't penetrated the basketball that often, but when they have, it's this lady right here, Liv Lindemann. Nice job by Joseph Kowicki coming around, knocking that one out. And, you know, one of the things that we haven't talked about all night is you know, this is the third game in five days for this Crestview Lady Knights Club. Uh, a week ago playing a very good uh, Berlin Highland team, coming away with a victory there, and then coming back and playing the cross-county rivals of Van Wert just about three days ago. And then tonight, a emotionally, you know, obviously a game that was scheduled on the calendar coming in and with a lot on the line. You know, and as we come down to this fourth quarter, you know, you don't, you're in kind of that part of the year where you, you, you worry about legs and, and conditioning. And, you know, we, there's been a lot of basketball up to this point and, and coaches are almost wondering, you know, okay, do we have to build in some days off and things like that? And a lot of games in a few days that, you, you know, you, you just have to start wondering at some point, you know, if these girls, they got to push through some of that stuff and, and, and get over that, you know, kind of that hurdle. You're right, Nate. And, and again, as a player, you want to play games, but I think where it comes into play, the coaches really have to focus on drawing things back and practice a little bit. The Tuesday and Wednesday practice for Crestview. Uh, Jefferson only had one day to prepare. You just got to be really smart in how intense you get during that practice time. French with another offensive rebound where she got fouled, and she goes to the line and sinks both of them. Two big points. Puts Jefferson up three with 5.44 to go. Now it's the Lady Knights turn on offense. Ellie Klein working against Lindemann. Gets it back over to Gregory. Gregory getting a little bit of space, trying to see if she can't create. She pulls up for three. And you almost saw that one coming. She was just trying to find her spot. She, she loves being able to kind of catch and shoot off of her own dribble, and she was just trying to wait for when it felt right. And you saw right there a big three-pointer for Callie Gregory. That is her fifth three-pointer of the year. Yeah, Hannah Wiltsey was there defensively, but Gregory was able to find rhythm with the dribble and then splash the three. Now Lindemann. She's going to go to work as Gregory tried to reach in and poke that one away. She's going to get whistled for the foul. All tied up. Punch, counter punch. Gregory with the three. Lindemann drawing the foul. <laughs> Great ladies high school basketball right here, Nate. Just fun to be a part of it. 15 foul for the Lady Knights. Gwen Tiemann takes it out of bounds, gets it over to Lindemann. Lindemann's going to come down into the corner, set up the offense. Almost got her hands on that, did Ellie Klein, but Wiltsy's able to get it, but it didn't matter as Callie Gregory is there to send it back the other way. Klein's going to run the floor. Josie Kilwicky catches it. She's going to go through the double team, has to get it out to Gregory. Gregory, three defenders as French drops back down into the middle. Now here's McCoy as Jefferson right now just trying to throw defense at the Lady Knights and force a bad decision. And it pays off as we're going to have a tie up. And the possession arrow favors the Lady Knights. Yeah, Jefferson changed their defensive look right there. They want more pressure up on the perimeter, so they went with a 1-2-2 zone. They're looking to keep two people around Gregory when she has the ball at the top of the key. They've been face guarding her as well, doing everything they can. Coach Lindemann pulling out of her box of tricks here right now. You can tell Crestview just trying to run screen after screen after screen, anything they can to give. Gregory a little bit of space. McCoy able, almost lost that one, able to gather it back in. Gawicki steps into a shot. That one's no good. Wiltsy with the rebound. Here come the Jeff Cats. 4-10 left to go. We're all tied at 33. Wiltsy three-point try off the mark. McCoy comes up with the rebound. Yeah, and it won't, once he hit that first shot she took tonight, that three has struggled a little bit from behind the arc since then. This game has been everything it was built to be, two evenly matched teams knowing how important this game is, and both of them wanting this win very, very badly. Gregory has that one taken away by Lindemann. Quick hands by Lindemann, we've seen that before. She's gonna work against Gregory, hesitation, gets that one up and gets it to go. Big turnover there, big steal by Lindemann. Here come the Lady Knights. 
Crestview able to avoid disaster right there and keep this possession as now they're down two. McCoy, she's going to drive, goes against a couple of Jeff Katz. Basketball goes out of bounds. She takes a hard tumble. She grabs her knee, as you mentioned, she's fighting through a knee injury. And really, tonight, you wouldn't have known that this is the first time she's really kind of showing any signs that that knee is bothering her. Coach Lindemann rotating players on Gregory. Tiemann has been guarding her uh, completely with the face guard. Now it's Kristen Moore doing the same thing. Klein in some trouble, able to get rid of it. Kilwicky, that seems to be her spot, steps into another one. Steps in is correct. A nice one-two step there from Macy Kowicki. Big bucket ties things back up here for the Lady Knights. Here comes the all-everything for Jefferson, Liv Lindemann. Lindemann works through the screen, gets it down to Tiemann. Tiemann's had some big shots tonight. She's going to drive, gets the right hand. That one's no good as Lacey McCoy is going to pick up the foul. Yeah. And that will be the team's sixth foul as Gwen Tiemann is going to go to the free throw line and shoot two. Tiemann able to get a good, quick first step on McCoy, draws the foul. Tiemann, she's only shot four free throws on the year, and that's her first make, one for five. Couldn't happen for a better time, at a better time if you're a Jeff Cat fan. Gwen Tiemann lines up her second shot. It's on its way. That one's going to be short. Lindemann trying to get to the rebound. And they fight for the loose ball. Lacey McCoy and Liv Lindemann. And Lindemann was out of bounds while she was trying to get a held ball tie up with McCoy. So it's going to be Crestview basketball. Tell the defense is playing tight. As both of these squads do not want to give either one an inch. Three minutes left to go. And we're going to have a timeout. Coach Gregory wants to talk about it. It's a full timeout. We'll step aside as well and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard is presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpawk, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. And when you take a look at the Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken scoreboard, you'll see that the visiting Lady Cats are on top 36-35 in a back-and-forth battle. Crestview running a set play, looking to get the ball to Gregory down low. Lindemann on her right now with the Saran Wrap defense. Gregory turnaround, jumper good. Great jump stop in the paint and the turnaround. Nothing but the bottom of the twine. Put Crestview back up by one. Two heavyweights getting after it here, Nate. Continuing the back and forth game as they keep trading the lead. Lindemann working against Kilwick. He gets it down into the corner to team and back up top for Marquis. Marquis three-pointer good. That is her third of the half as she has had some huge shots for the Lady Cats tonight. As we said, she comes off the bench for Jefferson, not afraid to shoot the basketball, does a great job right there, wide open, drills it. The two-point advantage now for Jefferson. And I have a foul call. I believe that they got this one on Gwen Tiemann, her second. As you saw them trying to play tight defense on Gregory right from the very get-go. Gregory comes back, Klein picked up her dribble, has to go somewhere with it, gets it to Kilwicky. There's Josie Kilwicky, he was trying to go down low, McCoy has to come and get it. All right now the Lady Knights consent with working around the perimeter until they get into the hands of Gregory. Here she comes, she pulls up, but we're gonna have a foul as Macy Kilwicky was trying to set the screen as it was coming around, got a little bit too much out of it. So she's going to pick up the offensive foul. It'll be her third of the game, and that is the 17th foul. So Delphus Jefferson in a two-point game, and this will be one and one. As Tough call right there on Kowicki. Again, you got to rub your player off the shoulder of your screener. There was a gap there, and as a result, the illegal screen occurred. Here comes Jefferson looking to set a double up top for Lindemann. So we have the 17th foul up on the scoreboard. Not sure why we didn't shoot. It was an offensive foul. That is why. Offensive foul, no one and one that time. As here comes Lindemann. And they're not, they're, they're going to pull it out a little bit. I'm not going to say they're putting it in the deep freeze, but they're looking for a 90% shot now or going to the foul line. 
Yeah, they're not going to try to force any bad shots. They're going to make Crestview make some decisions. And Elvis Jefferson now wants to take the timeout. It'll also be a full timeout. We'll step aside again and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Minute 10 left to go. Delphus Jefferson on top, 39-37, and they have the basketball. And Crestview's going to have to make some decisions here. Obviously, they're going to want to try to force the turnover, but it's still just a one-possession game. You have to decide when you want to foul, who you want to foul, you know, when do you want to start going down this road. Um, as the next fouls will send Elphus Jefferson to the free throw line. You're right, Nate. It'll, it'll be interesting to see if Crestview looks to get a trap when Lindemann gives the ball up or if they go with the foul right away. You don't want to foul her. Going to look for the tie-up as Klein gets in there. They're going to call jump ball. Possession arrow favors the Wildcats, but it does get a turn back into the favor for the Knights. Yeah, one minute and 10 seconds. I understand what Coach Lindemann's doing. A lot of strategy being played out. Long time to hold the basketball, though. We're going to have a lot, a lot, a lot of contact as they were trying to get in through on the inbounds that time. And eventually the foul does come. Macy Kowicki is going to pick up that personal. It's going to send Liv Lindemann to the free throw line. Again, she is the leading free throw shooter for Jefferson at 76%. One in the bonus, Nate. She is perfect from the line tonight as the first one is good. Macy Kowicki also just picked up her fourth foul, so she'll have to be careful as the next one will send her to the bench. Three-point lead, looking to make this a two-possession game. Shot is up, and it's good. Dagger free throws from your all-everything player steps up and does exactly what you would expect her to do. Coach Gregory is going to take a timeout. I believe that's his fourth. That leaves both squads with one timeout remaining. We'll step aside with 53.7 seconds and be back on WOSN. Welcome back. Tonight's scoreboard presented by Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Walpock, and Delphus. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. 53.7 seconds left to go here at Ray Esler Gymnasium in a huge NWC matchup between the Lady Cats of Delphus Jefferson and the Crestview Lady Knights. And right now, Crestview finds themselves down four, knowing that they got a score here as the time is not on their side. Got to look to get something quick in the possession here. Obviously, you want to look for Gregory, but Jefferson knows that as well. Slip to McCoy, down low to Kilwicky, kicks it back out, and here's Macy Kilwicky, gets it to Klein one more time. Klein up top, has to go somewhere with it, does end up getting it to Gregory. Tight defense, three-point shot, it's going to be off, ends up into the hands of Marquis. Marquis trying to find somebody for it, some contact down low, no whistle. 25 seconds left to go. Long pass. Saved from going out of bounds. And I can't see as we have some fans that are not able to see that they get the timeout before it went out of bounds. There's some conversation going on. And Coach Stratton, or Coach Lindemann, I think she got the timeout. She, she did. did. Great hustle by Kirsten Moore to get down there, save that basketball, and a great heads up timeout by Coach Lindemann to make sure they maintain the possession with 20.9 left to go. Great defense by Jefferson there in that possession by Crestview coming out of the timeout. Crestview just could not get a good look. A lot of time went off the clock, and then they ended up being able to get the ball to the other end of the floor. A great timeout. Crestview is going to have to foul right away here. Uh, try and deny the ball getting in because Jefferson's out of timeouts now. See if you can get a five-second call that way, but otherwise, if it gets in you got a foul right away and you got to give Kirsten Moore a lot of credit on the defensive side of things she had drawn the matchup against uh, Callie Gregory played great defense Callie had to force up a bad shot as she did not connect on anything and that's not something you see too often out of Callie Gregory which is a bad shot and Kirsten Moore forced one there yeah regardless of the outcome of this game uh, Callie Gregory is going to see red uniforms in her dreams tonight because 
they've been draped all over her outstanding defense. She's, she's going to be thinking, you know, two-thirds of this world's covered in water. She's thinking the other third's covered in red Delphus Jefferson uniforms. It's been great defense on her. So inbound from the corner. Trying to get it in. We'll get it along the sideline to Wiltsy. Wiltsy's going to be fouled. She'll take a trip to the free throw line. Hannah Wiltsy, a 59% free throw shooter. Still in the one and one, not the double bonus, so a big free throw here. And Crestview will have to move the ball up the floor as fast as they can and get a quality look. Either way, still will just be a two possession game as Wiltsy's first one is no good. Rebound down to Gregory. Gregory working against Wiltsy. He's going to have to get it up quickly. Gets across midcourt. Gets the shot up. Three-pointer on its way. That one misses everything. Long rebound favors Jefferson. Wiltsy able to get it, but a, not a great pass, but a good heads-up play by Rostifer. She tracked that one down, didn't panic, and when it was all said and done, with 2.2 seconds left to go, we're going to have a foul. Rostifer going to go to the free throw line, but at this time, at this point, it's just academic. Yeah, the Jefferson fan base applauding their squad, and rightly so. They're going to come away with a hard-fought victory. Coach Linderman having all of her players get off the free throw line. A chance to drive some nails here with 2.2. Jessa Rostifer comes up short on that one. She's a 69% free throw shooter. Second free throw on its way. That one's no good as well. 2.2 seconds left to go. Gregory's just going to put up a shot. That one's going to bounce off the front of the rim. And the Lady Cats are going to come away with a huge conference victory. It's going to keep them undefeated in the NWC. And looming on the schedule is a, a very big conference game against Lipsick. Yeah, great win for Jefferson coming into the Ray Etzler Gymnasium and getting the W. Jefferson, you're defending Northwest Conference champs. Their first big test, well, second big test. They had a one-point victory over Allen East earlier in the season. But this game, as we've talked about it, being a rivalry game all along, they do a great job coming in here and taking one home back to Delphus, a big victory over Crestview, defending NWC champs. Crestview runner-up last year with Grove. It looks like at this point in time now, it's going to come down to Lipsick and Jefferson. A lot of basketball to be played, but again, those two teams are in the driver's seat, and they have yet to play in conference action. A tremendous team game from both squads. Both of them showcasing superstar players in our area. Liv Lindemann, 18 points on the night. Callie Gregory with 19 for her team. They went back and forth all night long. But in the end, it was the Delphus Jefferson Lady Cats. Some big shots in that second half from Ryland Marquis as she came up with three three-pointers. And in the end, ended up being the difference in this game. It sure did. And we said it was going to be somebody in the supporting role uh, category that would come up big for her squad, and as you said, Ryland Marquis really did a nice job. Not shy to shoot the ball, and, and boy, did she look good in the second half, and Jefferson was able to outscore Crestview by five points in the second half after Crestview had the one-point lead at halftime to come away with the four-point victory. So the Crestview Lady Knights are going to fall to 11-4, and 4-2 four, four and two in the conference overall as Delphus Jefferson now moves to 15-1, and 5-0 and oh in NWC play, continuing a tremendous season as they are looking a little bit ahead as they have a quite a bit in front of them still but this Crestview team all credit goes to them as well a tremendous game tonight a lot of fight especially out of Cali Gregory they have a lot in front of them that they're looking to play for as well so that is just going to about bring things to a close here at the Ray Etzler Gymnasium as we had a tremendous battle tonight that was won by the visiting Delphus Jefferson Lady Cats as they knocked off the Crestview Lady Knights 41-37. We'd like to thank our crew for everything they did. Uh, Lexi working the cameras for us, uh, working back into the studio. Nick doing all the editing, doing all the hard work. We get to do the easy stuff. We get to be on air and talk. They do everything. Any final thoughts from you, Mr. Bowen, before we sign off tonight? Just a, a great game, a great girls basketball game. The stats were real close. Uh, Jefferson finished 32% from the floor. Crestview 30% right there. Um, 
Jefferson, five for 19 from two. Crestview, five for 15. Uh, Crestview out-rebounded Jefferson, 22 to eight, and both teams kept the turnovers under 10. Outstanding basketball game, what we thought we would see tonight. And uh, again, good luck to both teams the rest of the way. Jefferson being in Division Three, the conference will be well represented there come tournament time, and then Crestview and Lipsick as well in Division Four, as well as the other squads in the conference. Going to be a fun, down-the-stretch type of season for both squads. Also like to thank our down camera operator, Stephen, doing a great job as always. We appreciate everything our crew does here in the gym and back at the studio. One final time from Ray Esser Gymnasium. The Lady Cats of Delphus Jefferson knocks off Crestview 41-37. For everybody here at WOSN, thanks for tuning in. Have a great night, everybody.